Good morning and welcome to day 32 of our study. We are in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. We're going to be going through verses 9 uh, through 11 today. So uh, why don't you join us as we get into God's word today. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day already. And uh, I hope the Lord blesses you by the study of this word. Uh, in verse 9 it says, For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. We kind of have to go back into yesterday to, to, to discern what Peter is talking about here. He says, for he who lacks these things. It's somebody who lacks all of those characteristics that he, he speaks of in the previous verses. The, the characteristics of, of faith and virtue and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness and love. All of those things. A person who lacks those things is short-sighted even to blindness. And has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. A person who lives for Christ doesn't ever have to worry about uh, whether they are sure of their salvation. But you know, somebody who, who really wrestles with whether God saved them or not usually is not living a righteous life. They're usually not doing what they know to be right. They're not living as they know the scripture tells them to. More often than not. And what Peter is saying here is the person who lacks the, the desire to develop their relationship with God, somebody who is constantly in a state of spiritual immaturity, they are always going to go back to the fact that they, that they can't see the big picture. They can't, he says, short-sighted. You can't see how God has done wondrous things for you. You can't see the miracle of, of God's salvation in your life if you are not developing and maturing and getting to know God in a, in a closer relationship. You're never going to see it. He says you're short-sighted, even to blindness. It's, it's one of those things that you might be able to see it if you put it really close up to your face, but then again, you're so immature that you might not. And the person who can't see what God has done for them and, and doesn't see how it works in their lives every day, they have a tendency to forget. They have a tendency to forget what Christ saved them from and what he saved them to. They're uncertain of their salvation. Those people, whether they would say this or not, the way they live it, are also ungrateful for their salvation. Verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. Notice that he says that in verse 5, where he says giving all diligence, putting in your every effort, doing everything that you can. Be even more diligent now, in verse 10, to make your call and election sure. He's not saying do these things so that you're sure that, that, that you can be assured of salvation. We don't do things to get salvation. We don't, we don't do particular deeds or acts that would gain us favor with God. That's not what he's saying here. But what he is saying is if you are unsure about that step of faith that you took, where you said, you know, we, most of us we 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 prayed to the Lord, we said, Lord. I am a sinner. I have done things wrong, and I know I can't save myself. I need you to forgive me, and I accept that you died on the cross for my sins. That you did all of that for me, because that was what I deserved, and you took my place. I believe that you rose again three days later, and you are now alive. I believe it, and I need your forgiveness. For most of us who have said that, we have the guarantee of salvation. We feel that guarantee. We, we live in that guarantee. But it's for somebody who isn't developing these characteristics, that feeling is not there. The feeling of assurance of salvation is gone. What Peter here is saying be diligent in living for Christ. Make, make that salvation, that feeling of assurance, 
be unquestionable in your own mind because of what you are doing. Because you have said, I believe that God did all of this for me. I can give him no less than my life in exchange. He has done it all for me, and I know that my life is not, is not what's going to get me salvation, but I do it in devotion to the one who loved me. The Bible tells us that we love him because he first loved us. We make our, our salvation certain in our hearts and minds when we live every day like we're saved. You won't be questioning whether you have it or not if you've dedicated yourself to living as God intended or for us to live. Verse 11, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, those who, who live out their salvation, those who, who are, are taking every day to develop their relationship with God, to, to living out the commands of Scripture, to, to making sure that their life resembles that of Jesus Christ. Those people... They don't question their salvation. There's no hesitation about their eternal state. And they don't worry about the welcome they'll receive when they get into heaven. They don't worry about it. I think most of us, if we look at, at our failures, we don't want to stand before the Lord and... and, and acknowledge our failures for him we don't want to do that but a person who is devoted themselves who is diligently trying to make their call and election sure they don't worry about that because they're living it they're doing exactly what god commanded them to do there is no, there is no uh, violation of conscience. There is no violation of spirit or heart. There is no violation of Scripture if we are going to live by Scripture. If you want to be absolutely sure of your salvation, start living it. Start living like you're saved. Start practicing these characteristics that he, he has for us in the, in the previous section. Live those out, and you will be certain of your salvation. And practice them every day. I hope you practice them today. I'll see you next time.